Simple science. How does a cell get energy? Many cellular activities and processes require an input of energy. For example, muscle contraction, active transport of molecules across membranes, and the synthesis of biological molecules such as polypeptides and polynucleotides. ATP provides a store of chemical energy that cells can readily access to drive these processes forward. ATP stands for the molecule adenosine triphosphate. It is a nucleotide made up of the five carbon sugar ribose with a base side chain adenine and a triphosphate group attached. The relatively high energy required to counteract repulsive forces between negatively charged phosphate groups means that ATP can lose the terminal phosphate group to form ADP, releasing energy that cells utilize. ADP is recycled back into ATP by reattaching the phosphate group. So ATP can be reused again by the cell as a source of energy. However, energy is required to convert ADP and phosphate back into ATP. This energy, to form molecules of ATP, is provided by the processes of cellular respiration, which ultimately convert glucose and oxygen into carbon dioxide and water. The first stage of cellular respiration, known as glycolysis, occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell and involves the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate. This process does not require oxygen and so it is also known as anaerobic respiration. However, it only results in the net production of two molecules of ATP. In the second stage of respiration, which requires oxygen, known as aerobic respiration, pyruvate and oxygen are broken down into carbon dioxide and water, with the energy released along the way being used to produce many more molecules of ATP. This takes place in the mitochondria of the cell. In the first part of this process, the three carbon molecule pyruvate is broken down into two carbon acetyl, which attaches to a carrier molecule called coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A then feeds the acetyl group into the start of a series of reactions known as Krebs cycle. The effect of these reactions is to oxidize carbon to form carbon dioxide and to release hydrogen atoms, which attach to other coenzymes called NAD and FAD, forming NADH and FADH2. The purpose of NADH and FADH2 is to act as intermediate energy carriers. At the inner mitochondrial membrane, they release their hydrogen atoms as protons and high-energy electrons. The energy in the electrons is then used to pump protons out across the membrane. Oxygen is used at the very last stage of respiration, accepting the electrons and combining with protons to form water. By the end of this process, a proton gradient has been created across the inner mitochondrial membrane, and the potential energy released as protons flow back down this gradient through special channels in the membrane is used to convert ADP and phosphate into ATP. The net effect of the processes of cellular respiration is to release a total theoretical yield of between 36 to 38 molecules of ATP for every molecule of glucose converted into carbon dioxide and water.